is that if you ask people what creativity is in this country, they're more likely to resort to things like the arts, you know, artists, painting and all that, and, and music. If you ask people in other countries, only outside the UK, they'll just as likely to mention mathematicians, chemists, you know, engineers. So we need to actually understand what is creativity, what is the creative industry, and the creative industry isn't just the artistically creative industry, it also includes mathematics, sciences and all that. And if you put it all together, we have a massive industry, and that's why the creative economy is our second biggest industry. And without the creative economy, Britain would be nowhere. We rely, we are by far the most creative nation in the planet. We've invented more things than any other single country in the world. But you know, the government should bear in mind that, you know, even the last government invested heavily in the creative industries, even if it unfortunately did it through lots of quangos that were useless. And I would say to the present government, don't invest your money in quangos. They are useless. They spend your money, including people like the Arts Council who just waste it. You know, give it directly to where it matters and makes a difference. People should embrace a creative mind as a solution find. I mean, I'm not, I never understood why people turn to accountants, sorry, management consultants, but they're a bunch of accountants. Just expect a solution. What management consultants do is they just sit there, analyze all the numbers and give you another, give it back to you in a different order. You know, why don't they bring creative people in? Creative people solve problems. What we do most of the day, we think we're being creative. We're often just problem solvers. We're very good at problem solving. That's what, often why we drift into creativity. And when we have a problem, we don't seem to look to creators. We seem to look to number people. I never understood that. So I think, you know, creativity is the, the ultimate way really to solve a lot of our problems. If you look at a lot of the solutions we have, it'd be the creative people that will solve them. We just need to apply it. Actually, interesting aspect on this is I'm a great believer that we need to change our words every now and again. For example, good example, the way briefing's done. Get rid of the word proposition. Why do we use the word proposition? I mean, I don't use the word proposition, I use objective. I nowadays have challenged the way we write briefs, so I've changed the words. And sometimes what I do is I brief creators in different ways. So I might say to you, you know, here is the objective. I might say to the other person, this is what I want you to do. Do something that really surprises me. Do something that engages people. Do something which is makes the product look like it goes faster. And I think the words we use, uh, the problem with words is they come with baggage. And I think the reason they're anti-consumer is because it comes with baggage. Mm. Unfortunately, it is a word that everybody recognises. And if you're going to publish a book and you want to talk about how people are consuming, because we live in a consuming society, then you have to use the word consuming. But I don't disagree with the fact that maybe we need to create new words. I think we need to reevaluate what is consumerism these days and what are people really consuming because what we sell them is not necessarily what they're buying. Bear in mind that when you buy something like a fashion brand, you're consuming the image, not necessarily the product. And I think we do need to occasionally reevaluate what is the consumer today and also, of course, accept the simple fact that no longer are the brands in charge, the consumer's in charge. And it's about the brand earning a relationship with the consumer or the buyer or the brand loyalist, uh, however you want to do it. Web's created loads of T terminology, some of which are really crap. But, but you can see the relationship between brands and consumers has changed. So maybe the word consumer needs to be changed to, to emphasize the kind of relationship. And I think we have to understand that certain brands have different relationships from other brands. You know, we've seen the supermarkets have done a hell of a lot in the last 10 years to destroy the relationship between the traditional consumer and the brand. You know, and that's something they've set out to do. And meanwhile, create that relationship between themselves. They've kind of got in the way between the brand and the consumer and said, you're now loyal to me and anything I want to sell you is what you'll buy. It's a simple one word, it's fear. And you see it all the time, fear, you know. Clients are scared. They see good creativity, they run scared. They see the fact that things cost money, they run scared. All they're doing is trying to protect themselves. And fear is the thing that, that actually gets in the way. The thing I've noticed about every client that does good creative work is they're not driven by fear. That's why I love working for entrepreneurs. There's a big difference. Entrepreneurs don't see the fear, they see the opportunity. And I always draw an analogy. It's like, you know, if I take you up a mountain, and there's a temple at the top and you go, oh, I want to go to that temple. Halfway up the mountain, you forget you're heading for the temple. All you do is you look down and start worrying about falling off. And that's how clients do. We take them, we the creatives, all we see is the temple, the opportunity. Here's the big idea, let's go for it. Halfway up the mountain, the clients lose their bottle. They panic. And it's not any, so much a criticism of clients, it's just the nature of the people that go to work for clients or become account handlers who are very similar people. Didn't do it because they're brave. We're creators, we have to be brave to get where we get. We have to take risks. We have to be less self-conscious. We have to be prepared to stick our necks out and we have to be a bit more radical than the guy next to us. The conformity, we need people inside to conformists, want to become account handlers or go and work in nice, safe, large corporates. And that is where the problem occurs. It's the, the combination of the two don't always quite marry up. 
and we're not driven by fear. We actually, our fear is, is a failure. Their fear is to fail, you know, and they're, they're scared. So we're fearing of failing, so we struggle on to be different. They're always scared about criticism and stuff, so they kind of want to be safe, which is why 90% of the ad industry is very safe and makes lots of money being safe. Big agencies, they're very safe places. They don't push the boundaries, and they don't want to. But they make lots of money because the clients are like them. We tend to pick up the clients who want to be brave, the Ikeas as well, the King of Shaves, you know, Diageos who actually want to be a bit unusual. There has been a recession on, so people have cut back. What that's done that's made clients far more prudent and made them actually think about what they're spending money on. In some cases it's good because what they've done is they've challenged the rubbish, the stuff that is ineffective, and they looked at what's effective. And we found that some of the clients actually have gravitated towards us because they like the creativity and that's what they come to buy. And all these clients see a value in it, but there's an enormous number of clients who haven't got the message yet. Agencies are very inefficiently run, they're very expensively run, they have far too many account handlers. It's like the, the sort of middle management of the NHS, you only have to look at any of the big agencies, it's just full of useless people wandering around making sort of jobs for themselves and charging clients lots of money. A lot of agencies have come back and said, well actually we have to review the economics. And when you review the economics, we said we couldn't justify account handlers. Instead we brought in project managers who run the projects and we have strong planning and strong creativity. When you run that structure, it's much more efficient. So yes, recessions are brilliant because they make you refocus. 